on It's Supernatural. An accident left a man permanently injured and given only two years to live. See how this death sentence unlocked a secret that is now healing many incurables. Can ancient secrets of the supernatural be rediscovered? Do angels exist? Is there life after death? Are healing miracles real? Can you get supernatural help from another dimension? Has the future been written in advance? Sid Roth has spent 30 years researching the strange world of the supernatural. Join Sid on this edition of It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth here. Welcome to my world, where it's naturally supernatural. What happens if you have a, a, a terminal disease? You go to the elders of your congregation. They anoint you with oil, and you're not healed. Then you go to the best doctors money can buy, and you're still not healed. Then you go the alternative health route, and you're still not healed. What do you do? My guest says the cause of a high percentage of diseases are toxic emotions. He's getting 75% of the people that follow his instructions are getting healed, and he says the percentage would be even higher if they would do everything he tells them to do. My guest, Art Mathias, and you found out the hard way yes. about this uh, because you had a snowmobile accident. Yes. Uh, was it 1994? 1997. 97. Tell me about it. Well, those of us who live in Alaska love our winters. When I ride in a snowmobile, I flipped it over on top of me. And I didn't understand what happened, but my right shoulder started to cramp. And tremendous pain. And it took eight or nine months for me to struggle through to see what had happened and understand I ended up going to several doctors, MRIs on my shoulder, nothing wrong on the shoulder, another MRIs on my neck. They discovered that in that snow machine accident that I had ruptured and fragmented discs at three levels in my neck. And they said the pressure on my spinal cord was so great that I should be dead. I should not be able to walk. And the only solution was surgery. And like you said, I had the elders pray for me. It didn't help. So in January of 1998, I had surgery, and they fused four vertebrae in my neck, three levels, four vertebrae, and I came out of the surgery worse than I actually went in. I was more afraid, I had more pain, uh, and a different pain, because everything I ate, everything I wore hurt. The, some of the cramping in my shoulder had stopped, but the pain throughout my body was intense. I went back to the surgeon, he did another MRI, he says, your neck's not very good, but it's not because of these problems. I went to neurologist because I was getting numb in my fingers and my toes, and it was spreading, and they said I had a disease called peripheral neuropathy or small fiber neuropathy, and it was going to spread until it came up to my chest, my heart, and then I would die, and they said it would take two years. And in addition to that, you found yourself allergic to how many items? Well, I as I figured out what was happening, I had developed over a hundred allergies. And it was really the allergies that were causing the neuropathies in my fingers and my toes. I couldn't eat anything. There was only two or three different foods I could eat. Mm. Uh, clothing would make my arms burn, any synthetic clothing. I was down to wearing only the most pure cottons, very expensive pure cottons, uh, magnetic fields. And in the meantime, his sister develops tumors and she starts studying an area having to do with forgiveness and gets healed. And she sends the tapes to Art. What happened? Well, I was desperate. I w in that condition, I would even listen to something that I thought was about as hokey as it could be, that my thoughts or emotions could have anything to do with what was going on in my physical body. But I was, you know, I was raised in the church, and I didn't think I had to forgive anything. But as I worked through what she taught me about what bitterness was, I learned that I had a lot of resentment and anger and unforgiveness, which are all parts of bitterness. And so I started to forgive. I didn't know how to forgive. 
but I started to work through. I purpose and I choose to forgive. And then there's one other verse that kept coming up, 2 Timothy 1, 7. It says, I haven't given you a spirit of fear. And I said, a born-again Christian, I can't have a, a spirit. But I knew that I was controlled by all those fears of the future, the fear of the pain that I was living in every day, the fear of I couldn't eat anything. What am I going to do? And I, I can imagine that fear. Uh, it's, it, it must have... I, I mean, I imagine you almost despaired of life. I, life was so horrible. I couldn't eat anything. Everything hurt. Uh, life was hell, to be blunt, for me and my wife. Probably worse for her. But as I says, Lord, what do I do with this verse? As I, I knew I was controlled by this spirit, this fear. So I, I just said, in the name of Jesus, I command this fear to go. And it was like 100 pounds come off my back. And it took me two or three days to figure it out. But when that spirit of fear went, so did those hundred allergies. And then my nerve endings healed. And the arm that was withered from that accident, God healed the nerves. And I was able to lift weights and I got a normal arm back. So are you, you see, this is what he is saying. He's saying that God wants to heal us, Absolutely. but there are blockages in the emotional area, not just forgiveness, in many areas, not just mm -hmm. fear, in many areas. And when you deal with those areas, there is just a free flow of God's healing virtue. Absolutely. God, it's his desire, it's his will to always heal. But we look through scriptures and we find out many times he was unable to heal, and he marveled at people's unbelief. And unbelief is really any form of disobedience. And I was very disobedient to the Lord in having anger and resentment and bitterness in me. And then we start studying how those toxic negative emotions affect our health from, from science, from uh, psychology, an area of psychology called psychoneuroimmunology, and from medical textbooks. And what medicine teaches about toxic negative emotions and then what the Bible teaches. And it's not a surprise that anger, resentment, bitterness, jealousy, and envy, rejection issues, fears, worries, anxieties, cause disease. The American Medical Association says that more than 80% of all of our diseases are caused by these emotions. Uh, listen, a lady read this book of Art Matthias's and lost 95 pounds. We'll get to her in the next segment. Don't go away. We'll be right back to It's Supernatural! We now return to It's Supernatural! Hello, Sid Roth here with Art Matthias. And Art believes, and he's proven it thousands of times, that when toxic emotions are involved in an individual, it prohibits the healing of God to manifest his miracle. And when you can get rid of these toxic emotions, healing just flows. Now, Art, when someone goes to a doctor and they can't find out what's wrong with a person, the doctor normally says stress. Yes. Very common. And there's, it's actually true. What have you found out about stress? I agree with what the doctors are teaching. Stress is one of our biggest enemies. And stressors are defined as any anger, resentment, bitterness, fears, worries, anxieties, divorces, things that happen in life, we lose a job. These things are extremely stressful. And when these events happen, happen or these thoughts happen, it causes in our physical bodies what medicine calls a fight-flight response. And what does that mean? Well, that means that the adrenal glands are squirting out a whole bunch of adrenaline and cortisol. We get extra strength in our arms from right. all that extra uh, sugar that's provided to our muscles, all that extra strength. And our, the digestive system shut down. The extra cortisol and extra adrenaline also inhibits the immune system because it kills the T cell and the B cell. But God didn't design this for the rare time of emergencies. He didn't design this for us to live in it constantly. So when we live in it constantly, it, it, as I mentioned, it suppresses the immune system. And then any kind of a disease can come our way when our T cell, our B cells, our macrophage cells, our natural killer cells in the immune system are killed from the extra adrenaline and the cortisol. We just flat wear out and make ourselves susceptible to any kind of a disease because... Give me one example of someone that has taken care of toxic emotions and gotten healed. Oh, 
a good friend of mine last summer was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. And we prayed with him for over a 30-day period of time. And his next, M M his next uh, ex test, his next blood test, showed no cancer. Now, what was the major obstacle in him receiving his healing? Fears and worries about the future. Fear of getting sick because he was afraid that, that a disease would happen to him as it has happened to others in his life. That fear, that worry. And we've learned that fears are self-fulfilling prophecies. The things we are afraid of, as Job said in Job chapter 3, 20, verse 25, happened to us. Uh, there is a woman that read this book, yes. Biblical Foundations of Freedom, and lost 95 pounds. Let's take a look okay. at her now. This was me uh, two years ago next November. I've lost 95 pounds since that time. The reason I got this way was to make myself safe. I had a lot of things happen to me as a young girl that shouldn't happen. Uh, things my parents didn't know about and I was uh, lied to by the enemy and by a predator about things and so I held things in secret until I was 38 years old and as a result even though I was a normal weight in high school um, food and sweets were a comfort and and nurtured me I thought it was the enemy um, it was the lie of the enemy and so as a result I, I blossomed to this size um, about that was true. So about six months before this, my brother, who was 44 years old, had committed suicide and left behind uh, two boys who were 16 at the time and an 18-year-old daughter. He had lost his house, his family, um, his, his, uh, his wife, his business, all within a year. And um, so the year, that was on... Um, Valentine's Day three years ago this coming February. So that whole next year I was very, very angry and bitter at my brother. And I ate and I gained 20 pounds in that one year. And um, after, after this trip I came home and I saw this picture and I just thought, you know, I like food, I'm just gonna eat and I don't care anymore. And you know, I, but then in January, the Lord spoke to me in as clear a voice as, as almost, almost audible, where he, he told me, he said, what right do you have to be angry at your brother for committing suicide? Because you're doing the same thing in a different way. And I, came, I had to come to grips with all the self-hatred, with all the loathing of myself, the anger at myself, um, it wasn't that I hadn't forgiven those who had hurt me because I actually had worked through a lot of that. I hadn't dug deep enough. But um, I made a choice that day. I forgave my brother for committing suicide. And then I had to start working on forgiving me. And it was a process. And as I worked on the forgiveness of myself, working through the book, Biblical Foundations of Freedom, and through the other books and getting uh, prayer ministry, um, this is the result. I'm, I am no longer that person. This, this was the bondage. This was, this was the old me. And I, I've been set free. I can honestly say I love myself. What's real important to me is, Art, is she keeping her weight off? I saw her two weeks ago, Sid, and she looks even nicer than she looks there. And you know something? Change the subject for a moment. What is so amazing to me, Art, is you say, tell me what's wrong with you, yeah. and I can tell you what your toxic emotion is that you have to get rid of. That is very true. Medical textbooks list over 60 diseases that are caused by anxiety, stress, and fear. Uh, medicine draws very specific analogies with very specific diseases to very specific emotions. Let me try you. Okay. Migraines. Migraines are related to how you think about a conflict. There's been a conflict happened in your life and you're beating yourself up. You're saying, I should have done this, I should have done that, and you are second guessing yourself, condemning yourself. Art, sounds too easy. Well, Jesus isn't complicated. The Word of God is very simple, it's brilliantly, incredibly simple to forgive. Let me tell you something. 
In the next segment, you're going to find out that art is moving in miracles, major miracles. Don't go away. We'll be right back. We'll be right back to It's Supernatural. We now return to It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth here with Art Mathias. In art, uh, the one thing that uh, most people wouldn't understand is you have some very precise steps that people have to follow. It's not just a blanket prayer of I forgive everyone. Why, why do you have these steps? Why not just a blanket prayer? Because most people don't understand what forgiveness is. Forgiveness is actually releasing the pain and the memories. Unforgiveness is the anger, the resentment, and the bitterness, those toxic negative emotions. If, if those toxic negative emotions are there, there is bitterness, there is unforgiveness. And when we're forgiven, truly forgiven, those negative emotions are gone. So we lead people through a four-step process of, I purpose and I choose to forgive. And I cancel Satan's authority over me. I command that fear to go or that shame to go. And I ask uh, God to come and heal my heart and heal my body. And Lord, tell me your truth about this negative now, emotion. Now, most people don't do this. Oh, they just no. do that quick blanket prayer. And that's why they don't experience true forgiveness. Because the pain has not left their bodies. The pain hasn't left their emotions. And Jesus came to heal the broken heart. And the broken heart is all of that pain, all that hurt in the things that have happened to us in life. And His blood will take away, as we truly forgive, all of that pain. And then the fight-flight process will stop and healing manifests. Let's take a look at Kathy Haley. Uh, what was going on with Kathy? Kathy was conceived when she, by parents that didn't want her. She was given up for adoption. She lived her life in feeling like she wasn't wanted. Let's look at Kathy. On June 16, 2000, my life as I knew it came to an end. I was trying to speak to my business partner, and all of a sudden I realized what was in my head was not coming out of my mouth. I went to my car, drove home, and by the time I got into my house, I could not speak any words. I was diagnosed with having strokes, mini strokes. The MRI showed that both sides of my head was, were lit with infarcts and that I'd had a significant stroke somewhere, but nobody knew when. Um, the next step was that I was sent to Virginia Mason because all the testing could not pinpoint what was wrong. By the time I was through with Virginia Mason, I had been through every test all over again. And uh, at that point, they sent me home and said, we'll see what happens. I received a phone call and I was told that what was wrong was I had a genetic predisposition called Leiden Factor 5 and my blood was um, hypercoagulated. I was somewhere between sorghum syrup and Elmer's glue and that I was at 100% risk of a stroke. And so they began putting me on Coumadin, walking me through different things. For one year, I tried to get well. I was on the Coumadin, I was doing exercises, I was trying to bring my body into um, health, but I would look at pictures of myself and think, lights are on, nobody's home. It was, it was, I wasn't getting any better and I knew it. I'd had a friend who had begun um, seeing uh, art at Wellspring and she asked me if, would you like to see him and my answer was, Unequivocally, no. Um, I was sick, I didn't need any soul searching, and I didn't need any more religious mumbo jumbo. Thank you very much. Um, so I didn't take her up on it. In a week after seeing my hematologist, she went back with me to the doctor, and he was very specific. If we didn't get this under control, um, I was going to have another stroke, and this one may kill me. Once again, Nancy approached me and said, are you sure you don't want to go see art? And I, something in my spirit said, say yes. And the very lie that was killing me was exposed. I left there a completely different person, as you can see by the picture. At, uh, I went home and I was amazingly well. On September 11th, I went through a complete set of blood work. Everything was normal. 
my hormones were right, my uh, cholesterol levels were good, and I was healthier than I had been in years. When people ask me, Kathy, what happened? I feel like the man who was uh, questioned in the synagogue when he received his sight. He said, I don't know, I was just blind and now I see. And for me, I was sick and dying, but now I am well. What a wonderful word. Now, if it was just her, it would have been worth it. But it is so many people. I mean, some 75% of the people, and you think it can even be higher than that. Yes. If we really learn how to forgive, and we really want this, like Kathy has just said, her life changed dramatically when she just did the forgiveness, actually forgave. But most Christians, they understand forgiveness, but they don't go all the way. They don't do it. We, we've been told to do it, and so we think we have, but the pain is still in our bodies. If the pain is there, there's still the roots. The roots are still there, the bitterness, the unforgiveness is still there, if that emotional pain is still there. Okay, the miracles. I mean, you, you've been moving in a miracle level, what I call messianic miracles over yes. the last year. Uh, tell me what has occurred. In the last year and a half, we've seen six blind eyes and 18 deaf ears healed, and they are continuing. God, Jesus is coming again, and he used specific kinds of miracles to substantiate that he was really the Christ, that he was the Messiah. and. These kinds of miracles are coming back again. I believe, I, I absolutely believe that if you pray for those that are viewing right now, yes. miracles are going to erupt. Do you mm. believe that? Well, if two or more agree yes. in the name of Yeshua, it'll happen. Art, would you pray? Sid, I know that as we've been talking here, what we've discussed is raised issues in people's lives. And I would just like to, lead the audience in a prayer of forgiveness. So, if I may, please repeat this prayer back, and let's forgive one of those memories that's been triggered. Dear Lord Jesus, I purpose and I choose in my heart to forgive this person in this specific memory for what they did. I release them, and I cancel their debts to me. And in the name of Jesus, I cancel all of Satan's authority over me in this memory because it's forgiven. And in the name of Jesus, I command the pain, the anger, and the shame, and the guilt in this memory to go. And in the name of Jesus, I command my body to settle down and heal. I command the high blood pressure to go. I command the Crohn's to go. I command the cancer that's been caused from these negative emotions to leave my body now. I command the bone that won't heal to heal now in the name of Jesus. I command that migraine to go in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, come and do your work and heal our hearts and heal our bodies in Jesus' name. I see the Holy Spirit working and as people are praying through these miracles and praying through the pain in their hearts, I see the peace coming. I see the joy coming. I, I, I feel that peace yes. right now. And I, I have to tell you something. When I read your book, one of the most important things that came across to yes. me is getting control over my thought life, yes. uh, over gossip, Absolutely. Uh, over uh, feeling negative feelings. I mean, I am getting rid of that stress level. It's so wonderful. And I feel the peace. I feel that peace. Do you feel it? It's the Prince of Peace, Jesus, the Messiah. That's the one. If you are encouraged and helped by these television programs, please consider assisting us with future productions. Send your tax-deductible gift to Sid Roth, Post Office Box 1918, Brunswick, Georgia 31521. Call toll-free 1-800-548-1918 or visit our website at sidroth.org.